Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Edward Bolton. This is my uh, colleague, Cassie. Um, this project was also run with another colleague, uh, Tom, who was not able to make it here. Um, but it's his subject area we're going to be talking about, which is uh, sports and exercise science. So we're going to talk to you about, um, we're going to talk to you about why we um, got to the students to an escape room. Um, we're going to do a quick demo for you. Um, we're going to look at the, the technical considerations of building um, the whole escape room in, and using H5P. Um, and then we're gonna, we, we investigated the feedback that we got from the students from doing the escape room using H5P. And we're looking at uh, the further impact. And uh, we also use digital badges as well. So when the students um, completed the escape room, they got this digital badge you see here. So I'm going to show you a, a quick video. It's the introduction video that we um, gave to the students. Um, we've had to cut it and speed it up because of the shortness of the presentation. Uh, but the, uh, the slides you can download has got the full version of it. Oh. And the sound's not working. Inspired by the 1996 case study of Dolly the Sheep and previous works from the 1800s, our researchers have been working tirelessly to see if genetic cloning can now be applied to the human being. Early results are successful, however, it has come with its risks, and our first prototypes do not seem to be living clones. So as we can see from that tutorial video, early genetic cloning at Soviet University is still a work in progress, in that most of the clones that we have produced tend to be dead, not very useful. However, I myself was one of the subjects that donated my body to be cloned, and I have bought that body in order to show some anatomical locations. We're going to use it for the benefit of teaching on this course. I have over here that genetic flow that we're going to work through today, some various bony landmarks and tests and muscles to show you how they all come together. What's that? Oh no, they didn't tell me that they're coming to life after they're dead. Quick, we need to get out of here. So that was a little flavor of what the students get to see to kind of set them up and get them started with the escape room. Um, why did we choose to build this escape room? So it's founded in the pedagogies of uh, problem-based and experiential learning, but really the escape room is able to use a, a strong narrative to drive the student's engagement and to promote the engagement. And the purpose of this exercise was to build community among the first year students. So the students don't know each other, they're coming into their course for the first time, they're put into teams, and they're able to complete the escape room via the H5P activities to build that community. Um, it also helps them to develop soft skills such as problem solving and critical thinking. Uh, crucially, it helps to build a familiarity with Moodle. So the course sport and exercise therapy that uh, created the escape room in this instance, um, they use Moodle a, a lot and in terms of their revision for their activities and their course. So the escape room helped them to build that familiarity with Moodle um, and relationships with the course team as well. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is do a quick demo. Um, we, we, we didn't think that uh, we'd have to do a live demo, so we did it in slides, but we have got it if someone wants to see it afterwards. So um, we started off with very low stakes. So as you see, it's quite you know, funny, zombie escape room. We didn't want to, to put too much pressure on the students. So the first initial activities that we designed as part of it, very low stakes, supposed to be more fun. And then we move on to more sort of things that relate to actual content. So this is just an example of a H5P here. Um, all they have to do is enter the password that they're given by the tutor, and that starts the escape room. So here we go. And, and, and we use a lot of different types of H5P in, in, e these, in these. This is just to get the students used to the different types of interactivities they may use throughout their course. So for example, this is a drag and drop. And you can see it's quite easy. You, know, you have to know where the, the sports teams are located in, in the UK and then drag, them, um, drag and drop them from north to south. And we used, um, re sorry, we used restricting activities within Moodles to stop people jumping ahead. So you had to get it right before you could move on to the next uh, activity. And the students, as we said, the students work in groups so they could discuss and chat, and, and that's helping to build the community. So here's another type, and this one's just uh, the flip the card ones to match. And so not only are they flipping the cards to match them, we've also got the pictures of the academics who are teaching the course and their names and everything. So to try and create some familiarity with the course team that they'll be working with. 
um, these um, these icons here represent the modules that they'll be doing. And then this, in this example, they're just clicking on them to see which ones they're doing um, in, in their first year. Next, we move on to a, um, uh, this is a grid. And um, this is a student campus. And there's some questions beneath it. We haven't got it on the screenshot, but we can show you on the live one. And they, ha they have to use the grid references locations to solve uh, a mathematical problem. Um, but again, it gets them used to the Solent campus, so they know all the buildings are. They have to know that in order to solve the problem. So, th so we, first of all, we sort of have low-stake ones, uh, activities. Now we start moving into content that's related to the course material. Um, as we saw, uh, sports and exercise therapy, you can see. And now they're actually, so the community is sort of built now with, this, with the students. So they sort of get to know each other. They know how this all works. They know how Moodle works now. And now we can actually challenge them with actual content related to um, their course. Um, so they don't need to worry about the technology more, anymore. We sorted that. We sort of built the community. Now we can work on the pedagogy and actually get them to understand the content. So this is sort of a, a drag and drop and they have to fill in the sentence. Um, and here's an interactive H5P video. So the video plays, it demonstrates an exercise and they have to identify the exercise from that. And it prompts, uh, it stops the video and prompts them. Uh, this final screenshot, again, we can show you live, just shows you all the activities. So the, what we did is we hid them all, we stuck them at the bottom and then we embedded them on the page. Um, and you can see there, um, as they work through them, you, um, they release and then they have net access to the next activity. So the benefits of this model, this escape room being built in Moodle with H5P, um, it's the foundations of that ongoing course community. So again, bringing the students together, it's scalable. So the students work, are working together in teams, but the Moodle course can be accessed by hundreds of students at the same time to complete the activities. It's really easy to duplicate the structure. So we could export this course, put it into another subject area, and they could just edit the activities, but keep the narrative, the zombie kind of narrative here. Um, it's reusable year after year, and again, it helps to build that familiarity with Moodle. The biggest consideration, I would say, with building something like this is time. So the, the lecturer, Tom, our colleague, he wrote the zombie scenario, and he made the videos, as you could see before. That took about an hour. Um, the H5P activities, I would say there are, I think, 12 of them in this, uh, in this escape room. Took about five hours to build. And then Ed and I were involved in the, the implementation of the technical elements, which took about two hours. <clears throat> uh, we have a, a live working demo in Moodle 4. These screenshots are from Moodle 3.9. Um, if anyone wants to see it afterwards, we can show you. The, the main consideration for moving to Moodle 4 for us is the navigation. So previously, we had the activities embedded on the page. I don't think that's going to work with Moodle 4. So um, now we're going to be putting the instructions within the activities so the students can navigate from one H5P activity with the narrative elements and the videos built in and on to the next activity, refreshing the page each time to get them to move through the activities in the sequential manner that they had previously. Uh, very quickly, you can look at the slides and download them, um, but we got feedback um, uh, from the students. Obviously, they really enjoyed it. They said it was far better than reading, like, say, an introduction manual to this is your course, these are your, your tutors, and they find it far more engaging. Um, we first ran this during lockdown, so the major feedback that we got what they liked better is they'd actually like to do it in person, so we got them all on Teams to do it. Uh, but now we now run it in person um, because we're back in the classroom. And finally, um, the impact, uh, the, our team conducted an action research project on the virtual escape room, on a version of the virtual escape room. And the students reported confidence in those soft skills, um, one being interpersonal skills. So that was, that, again, that community building. But I wanted to point out the below the zombie picture. This course, this escape room, and this exercise of bringing the students together and getting them familiar with Moodle resulted in sport and exercise therapy at Solent having the highest engagement with Moodle across any course in our entire university. So 
this type of activity, getting the students together, getting the students familiar with Moodle, and using Moodle as the kind of basis for the learning activities moving forward in the course has resulted in a huge impact for this course and for these students and their engagement with Moodle at Solent. Thank you very much. So, when you did it, vir oh, sorry, when you did it virtually, um, did everybody complete it individually, or did you still like meet on Zoom in groups and then one person did it? They they worked together in teams and on virtually in um, in groups, and it was usually the case that one person was kind of the leader of the student group, and that person then clicked through the H five P activities on behalf of the group. Did you end up using groups in Moodle to make sure everybody got completion for that, or did that not matter? <clears throat> um, no, they kind of all did it individually, and we knew that the, the badge could be awarded. I think we awarded the badge uh, criteria with the final activity. So as long as they all were participating, they all received the digital badge, we didn't really need to facilitate the groups in Moodle as long as they were in groups completing the activity together. Excellent, thank you. 